Okay, hello everyone. So I'm Leandro and I'm going to present this work, uh, Agents Vote for the Environment, Designing Energy Efficient Architecture. It's a collaboration work also with the School of Architecture at the University of Southern California. Uh, basically, building design is a very important domain when we, uh, nowadays, when we have to worry about sustainability, about finding good solutions for our current lifestyle. Basically, buildings are leading consumers of energy nowadays. And the way a building is designed has a major impact in the energy consumption of a building. And once a building is constructed, basically you can't easily change it. You just have accepted how that building is throughout its whole life, lifespan. So it's very important to design good buildings from the beginning. And the way it's done nowadays is that the designer simply tries some models by hand. Of course, he's going to use a computer to make these designs, but he has to actually sit and make designs like manually. And some of these designs he can evaluate, he can have an idea of how much energy that build is going to consume using tools like Green Building Studio and etc. But it's very limited, the number of designs that a human can try by hand and explore. And to make this problem even more complex, uh, the, the way a building is designed also impacts the cost that's going to it's uh, also going to impact how expensive it's going to be to make that building. So a designer has to balance different factors like the energy efficiency, the construction cost, among others, making it even more complicated for a human. So in the computation design literature, a current solution is to use genetic algorithms. Like for example, we have the Beagle system that receives as input an initial design made by a human, but that initial design has some free parameters, and then the system optimizes these parameters and outputs a series of design solutions. And basically in this work, we are going to further improve the state of the art by showing the potential of aggregating opinions in this domain. So basically, we are exploring the aggregation of opinions in multi objective optimization problems. And we are going to show in our experimental results that a team of agents is able to find one order of magnitude higher number of first-ranked solutions than each single agent. This is giving the design a higher number of high-quality solutions that she's going to choose from later according to her subject evaluation of the designs, and is going to also eliminate solutions that are falsely reported as first-ranked by the individual agents. And because of the two previous points, we are going to increase the confidence of the designer that she found the true Pareto frontier, the true optimal solutions by using the system. So very briefly, some previous work. Uh, this work is related to our previous research in team formation, where we showed that aggregating the opinions of agents has a great potential in the computer goal domain. It's also related to the social choice literature but normally, uh, they are more focused in single object optimization problems, and they show, more, they show more like toy applications, like slide square eight puzzle games and things like that. It's related to machine learning, especially to ensemble systems where a set of classifiers is used to create like a more powerful classifier. And of course, architecture, where nowadays a lot of GA-based approaches are being proposed. So uh, again, the Beagle system works by first receiving an initial parametric design from a designer. So this is a simple example where you have the x1 and the y1 variable, and the system can change the value of these two variables to decide where the corner of that build is going to be located. So of course, you can have more and more variables and more and more complex designs to make the system more like usable for the designer, more realistic. And the Beagle system optimizes according to three factors. The energy consumption of the building that's calculated using the Autodesk Green Building Studio. The financial performance of the building that's going to take into account how expensive it is to make that building. And the conformance to the project, to the project requirements. So for example, how much area is being given to hotel, to parking, to retail, and how much this conforms to the initial requirements of the project. And as I said, this is a Pareto optimization approach. So there will be a set of solutions that are said to be in the Pareto frontier, 
where it's not clear which solution is better than the other. Like if you change from one solution, the Pareto frontier, to another, you are going to lose in one of the factors and gain in another. So it's more like a kind of personal preference. And there will be a lot of other solutions that are said to be dominated by this Pareto frontier. So they are going to be worse than the optimal ones, considering all the three factors at the same time. And the Beagle used the genetic algorithm approach. So you have a set of solutions, like a set of vectors that are the offsprings, and a series of mutations and crossovers are performed across a series of iterations. And in the end, it outputs a set of first-ranked solutions to the design. And these are the three parametric designs that we are going to explore in this work. And as you can see, they are going to increasing level of complexity in terms of the design. And we are going to aggregate the opinions of a series of Beagle systems. So basically, each run of the Beagle is going to be seen as an agent that's going to output its opinions about each one of the parameters in the parametric design. So given a certain parameter, the agent is going to output its opinion. It is going to output the value that the agent thinks is the best for that parameter. And when you have multiple runs of the Beagle, you can have your multiple agents, and each one is going to have a different opinion about that uh, parametric variable. So when you have the multiple opinions, you can aggregate them using certain aggregation rules. <coughs> and in this work, we are starting with more like naive approach, like the mean, median, and the plurality vote of the opinions of the agents. Uh, it's a little bit more complex in this case because of the multi object optimization. Each agent, each agent actually has multiple opinions. He has multiple first-ranked solutions. So for each parameter, there are more than one solution for each agent. So in order to deal with that, we are actually aggregating among different combinations of opinions of the team. So at each iteration, we pick one first-ranked solution from each agent, then we aggregate these first-ranked solutions across each one of the parameters, creating one team solution. And we keep doing this across a series of iterations, creating one team solution at each iteration. Of course, this is computationally expensive because of the combinatorial part. So we limit the set of solutions that we are getting from each agent in order for it to be feasible. Uh, we study two different team types, a diverse and a uniform team. You can ask me about this later <laughs> because I'm out of, running out of time. So basically, we are going to show experimental results where we aggregate all combinations of three first-ranked solutions from four agents. In order to evaluate the solutions, we rank together all solutions, so we put in the same space all solutions of the teams and all solutions of the agents in order to be able to compare them in a Pareto optimization approach. Uh, just as a reminder, each, each single agent is a GA, is the current state-of-the-art approach. And we are going to evaluate these systems by the number of first-ranked solutions in that Pareto frontier that each system is able to find. So these are the results for the base model. Uh, as you can see, the diverse, the uniform team, they are able to find a much larger number of first-ranked solutions than each one of the individual agents. Uh, agent 1, for example, even has no first-ranked solutions in the end when you rank everything together. These are some of the examples of the design variations that the diverse team outputs uh, for the design. And this is for the Office Park model that's, also not, that's now more complex. And again, the diverse and the uniform team find a much larger number of first-ranked solutions for the design. Again, some examples of the team solutions that the diverse team is able to find. And now for the contemporary design, we are still missing the results for the uniform team. But we can already show that the diverse team finds a large number of first-ranked solutions. There are some examples again. And we also plot these solutions in the space of the three factors that we are optimizing so that we can see that Pareto frontier. So as we can see, there is like a large number of different solutions, not like all solutions are aggregating a single point, for example. And also for the Office Park model, and for the contemporary design, we can see like a small cluster <laughs> in the corner. But overall, we are being able to get like a nice coverage of the Pareto frontier. 
And finally, by using our approach, we are also able to eliminate falsely reported first ranked solutions. Because basically, when an agent is trying to find solutions, it finds its own Pareto frontier, and it has like a set of first ranked solutions. But when you rank everything together, some of these, they disappear because they are dominated by better solutions proposed by the team, for example. So <laughs> here we are showing how many solutions were, that were falsely reported as optimal are, are, we are being able to eliminate by using our approach. So in the end of design, we only have like really high quality solutions to choose from. So basically, yeah, so these are the conclusions. We are able to give you high quality solutions for the designer to choose from according to her subject evaluation by using this approach of aggregating opinions of a team of agents. And now I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much. What drives up the cost in the construction? You mean how it is calculated or? No, like, when you design, what kind of things that you do to make it look like you have to pay for it? Oh, OK. That's a bit hard for me to answer you, because I'm from computer science. <laughs> the model is more like made by my uh, collaborators from the architecture school, right? What I can say is that they make a model in the Autodesk Revit. And in this tool, they have a way to estimate the cost of a building, basically. Yes. Yeah, yeah, each one of these boxes is a result of a GA. No, uh, I mean, one run produces a set of solutions. So we, it, each line is one GA run, but each GA run is producing three top-ranked solutions in this example. Yeah, sorry, the, the picture is not completely clear, but is it clear now? I think so. Okay. So presumably, you could also turn up the number of solutions each individual Beagle run would generate, right, to generate more solutions. And, and that's also increasing computation time, but your method's increasing computation time. Do you have some sort of sense of how much your method outperforms just a single run with more candidate solutions? OK, I see. Uh, we don't have that experimental result right now, like uh, how much would that compare to running the bigger system, let's say, four times longer, right, for example. But what we can say is that at least with this approach, we can parallelize the run, right? So it would be able to, I mean, you can get four runs in, in the time of one run by using multiple threads, right? So at least you are getting results faster. But yeah, it would be interesting to compare against a bigger system running four or five times longer. Any other questions? I'll thank our speaker again. Well, thank you very much. Does anyone have a clicker or a laser pointer that could?